Welcome to Let's Talk Tech. We have with us Mr. Johan Nilerud, who is the uh, head of strategy at Khazna, the dominant uh, data center player in the UAE. Who is Johan and what your responsibilities are? Congratulations on very good pronunciation of Khazna, by the way. Uh, I'm not Arabic speaking, but uh, you did it very well. Uh, Khazna actually means safe. Safe, yes. Uh, which you probably know uh, yes. where it comes from. Uh, myself, uh, Johan Nilerud, I head up uh, strategy and planning for Kasna. Uh, joined a year and a half ago. Uh, my background is, has always been on business development strategy, but mm -hmm. on the telco sector, on uh, subsea cables. And joined a year and a half ago uh, with Kasna, as Kasna has since two, two and a half years ago, embarked on a very intensive expansion, um, expansion plan. So I look after you know the, the planning side, looking at new markets, trying to see what the uh, what the North Star looks mm -hmm. like in this mm -hmm. very dynamic uh, mm. environment that we're that we're in. Are you even starting to think about designing for the future? Yeah. Well, um, I think what we do is, you know, we have our tagline, of course, which is uh, building uh, data center infrastructure to for the future. Yeah. But what we really do mm -hmm. is very simply we have one product we build large scale data center what we provide to our customers are power cooling space and security for 15 to 20 years over the over the lifetime and uh, and that is obviously to to power and, and and drive you know used to be cloud still is cloud and that's still expanding and now uh, transcending to to ai uh, and uh, more intense uh, uh, compute uh, capacity. So it hasn't changed too much in terms of how we look at opportunities. It's, it's more in how we deliver that and how we um, configure our design to, to be enabled that. So obviously the biggest challenge or the biggest change is the high density um, mm -hmm. that we're seeing from these um, uh, AI uh, compute uh, Requirement of GPUs, uh, etc., and, and that is the biggest challenge. And how do we, how do we cool that? Uh, whether it's liquid cooling, and you know, it's all it's a constant uh, trade-off in in all these elements when you, you're making uh, investment decisions, uh, not only on the design but the location, uh, because these are sort of static assets that's going to be there for yeah. 20, 25 years. So yes. it, it's very important the. Uh, the, uh, the analysis that goes into it in terms of how you design and weigh the different, uh, yeah, the, the different trade-offs, which are many. Can you tell us a little bit more about your investment strategy? Um, from in terms of our investment strategy, so we are a full platform. Uh, I would say. So we do everything from find to design to build to operate. So we own the whole life cycle of the data center. We're not just you know, focusing on one. And that, that is our, so the investment strategy Follows that we like to have we, you know, being a platform. It's we want the operational control of the data center. We've now created. We've, we've been in this business for over a decade now, uh, and our, you know, our standard design and further standardizing that in terms of our operating procedures are now very robust. And, and you know, we built this in the UAE um, over these ten years, which has has seen a huge growth mm -hmm. um, and we're now at a stage where we perfected that that whole model in terms of how we uh, how we uh, yeah, find design construct and, uh, and operate so um, partly us but also partly driven by uh, ambition by, uh, by UAE and our shareholders uh, looking to expand uh, a, uh, across the region so we look at uh, primarily under currently underserved markets mm -hmm. um, and we have various sort of metrics how to evaluate mm -hmm. that but also looking from our home is the UAE mm -hmm. it will always be our home and that will be the sort of the center of, of gravity of our of, of our operations but we're looking at um, you know we're, we're looking at the a radius of you know say 40 50 millisecond which is sort of the that sweet spot but particularly now for AI what, what can you serve within that and mm -hmm. Um, you know, within that range, you're touching around four billion uh, people, population, and a growing population. 
Uh, and I think that is really how, I mean, that is our strategy and, 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 and looking into new markets. Um, so we have, uh, we have started expanding in terms of uh, securing some land in, um, in, in Saudi, Egypt, we're looking at Turkey, Kenya. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the markets where we are much further ahead, but we're, we're looking more broadly as well. You know, we have about 50 different data points that help us evaluate the, the potential. Yes, okay. so obviously power availability and green power availability. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Kenya, which we've been looking at, obviously has a huge geothermal um, plant that uh, that is a very interesting prospect for us. Uh, so power and the sustainability plays a big role. Uh, access to talent, for example, mm -hmm. the, you know, is there uh, mm -hmm. parallel industries that we can leverage for, yeah. uh, for data center? Uh, and then we have, you know, of course, the more macroeconomic view, which is we have a very quite simple, but it's looking uh, to define if they're underserved. It's a, a megawatt per per GDP or megawatt yes. per, uh, per population. And that gives us a good indication of, you have the, the big uh, markets, uh, Northern Virginia, Singapore, and these markets, which are well above that standard line. We believe that uh, for various reasons that that's gonna equalize globally. There's gonna be some winners and some left behind, but we think that that's gonna equalize. So when we find markets that sit under that sort of normalized mm. scale, that's that's where we see an opportunity. And, we, and this is the same that's coming from our customers with the immense demand that we have. You know, where can we find uh, being close to the population, yes. uh, uh, but also finding power and the right power mix and the, and the aspirations. So it's a, it's a big puzzle. Same time, do you have a strategy in terms of your energy mix? In, uh, in terms of what our strategy or ambition is, is, you know, we, have, we have, certainly have targets in terms of where, what the right mix uh, Mixes. I think geothermal is is very interesting. Um, you know that uh, it's it's very stable um, and you know it's it's uh, it's green essentially because it's, yes. it's coming from the ground. Uh, that is a huge potential, uh, and there's a lot more potential in, in places like Kenya, Tanzania. We, yeah. as you know, have uh, you know 5.4 gigawatts of, of operational nuclear power. We heard some news. I think yesterday or today from Oracle, for example, they're looking now looking at the, the SMB to power their so giga yes, plants. Thank you. Again, you you, uh, you uh, have the doubters and the proclaimers, and some of the doubters are now turning into um, uh, actually proponents for uh, for hydrogen. Um, I, you know, it, it's a cost to some extent in that until the, yes. the cost uh, come down, and there's some yes. other other factors that has to play in, but that's definitely part of the, uh, part of, I think some of that is probably, I think perhaps also with, with SMB, it's, it's, it's probably five to six years until it's industrialized to, yes. for the large scale that we're, that we're doing. Let's speak about the influence of uh, AI. Um, how much of that can you see on the market dynamics mm. in the, uh, Europe, uh, sorry, in the Middle East and African markets? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think you know you have the training and the inference sort of not conundrum, but but you obviously have training which is very well suited in you know where there's power and where there's availability and maybe not uh, no much dependence on, on on latency and then you have the inference. Uh, the uh, these are we have a view of sort of where we're heading and how quickly it's heading, but to be honest, it, it's especially on. You know the connectivity and how it interacts with sort of more edge uh, edge computing, uh, whereas we build you know large scale sort of core uh, core data center. Um, I think we've we've seen a lot of the demand that we we've, we've seen now the I would say the last year and a half, last two years, is coming from from AI. Uh, you know from global players that want to you know put some training loads in. Uh, uh, in markets and then build uh, build inference uh, on top of that. So we're we're very much exposed to the the global AI uh, the global AI boom. Probably legacy data centers are struggling because you can't really retrofit for AI. Plus, there's all these constraints in yeah. the legacy with the legacy markets with the grids, you yeah. know, and with the energy, etc. So 
Does any of this constitute some kind of a, a, or a lure or a, an attraction point for any of these players to potentially be looking at the, re at the region where you are based? Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, we've also gone through a massive transformation from Kasna. Kasna is, is still, you know, 2014, so 10 years ago, we launched our first two data centers. Uh, at that time, they, the size were huge. It was, uh, you know, groundbreaking to have, uh, I think it was three megawatt size, one in uh, Abu Dhabi and one in, one in Dubai. That now is probably considered a sort of a legacy. It is, yeah. <laughs> a legacy. Now we're building, uh, uh, you know, the, the recent one's operation now is 31 megawatt, and now we're building 400, mm -hmm. 100 megawatts. So you have, we've gone through that shift as well um, in terms of, um, uh, you know, how it's, how it's really scaling up. Uh, I think from the opportunity for the Middle East compared to legacy markets, mm -hmm. so, so, you know, Singapore, the, you know, the Virginia, London, the flat countries. For us, this is really where, where the open opportunity is. Uh, they are uh, uh, there with some of the challenges in, in those markets. You know, they're very saturated, uh, not only from power, but also from land uh, uh, and all aspects. So we see a big opportunity to uh, take some of the overload from those markets, also in this AI I mean, it is something the Middle East is is known for. It's being bold and building things that you know for the future, um, and, and maybe not so held back by. Um, I think as we said, uh, someone in the panel saying that some of the grids are you know 15 years overdue now, end of life. Uh, um, we don't have the same problem in the, uh, in the Middle East, and I think there's also the actually on the construction construction side, which is a big piece. There is. Uh, there is good competence uh, in the region to, to drive this data center. is sim not si similar at all to building a hotel or a Burj Khalifa, but it's still, in the AI age, you need to think differently in terms of how you, how you build this. So I, I think, yeah, there's, there's many parts playing for it. And, and I think the last part is actually the, which the industry is facing is uh, resources and, and talent. And, uh, you know, um, live in Dubai, um, which has a, such a diverse base of, of, of competence from all over the world. But On the availability of powered land, is this mm. an issue uh, in, well, Dubai or Abu Dhabi? Uh, it's still a bit nascent in terms mm. of where it is in, in, in more mature market of the concept of, yes. of, of powered land oh, exactly. or powered shell or, or, or those things. Uh, so I think it's still in the nascency, but I think there's going to be opportunities. In terms of operational capacity, mm. uh, UAE is, is, is quite ahead. It's the big pipeline of, of construction that's, mm. that's coming. When these comes live, even when you come live with a large data center, say a 100 megawatt or a 50 megawatt, the actual fit out is normally staged out over a couple of years as well. Yes. So once, the, once yes. the, the core and shell has some initial fit out. So every, these numbers are, you know, yeah, sometimes it depends what you're talking about. If you talk about what's actually provided to customer, and then of course you have the what actually customers are drawing yes. out of that, which is, you know, in a I think across the, it, it's still um, um, so the utilization is not reaching the the 80, 90. Is, is Hasna adopting or driving innovation when it comes to digital um, mm. and AI specifically? The, the research and the innovation is, is certainly there. Uh, I think, you know, in, in, in the UAE we have um, the only AI university, which, you know, you can graduate with an AI uh, uh, certificate. Uh, and a lot of research is, is coming well, into Well, you've the had country. the first AI ministry. Exactly. That's so, EIA. Yeah, and was very one of the first the world. five countries to have an AI Policies from, from Kasna, so we're part of a you know of a bigger group that has obviously different portfolio uh, yeah. markets and also making investment in some of these that we can uh, that we we are able to leverage when it comes to clean energy and you know we okay. have um, um, yeah, Mustar in, in, uh, in the UAE which is making oh, big investments yes. across and, and you know our data center campus is actually in uh, in Mustar so mm. uh, so I think from from Kasna we are trying to leverage those kind of uh, partnership to drive to drive innovation. I wondered if you had any CSR initiatives. 
Yes, and it was actually very interesting to be here too. There was a lot of discussion on, on you, know, um, you know, data centers. I think we have a, have a role to sort of demystify a bit what, what is a data center and, you know, some people want to go. And, and so how we interact with the, with the communities is very important for us in the, in, in the UAE. So we, uh, we have several initiatives that we're doing um, uh, along those, uh, you know, CSR and, and, uh, and driving that in terms of interacting with schools and taking on uh, graduates and with the, with the communities in terms of how we uh, contribute both on, on ESG or the, the S of the, the ESG. You know, with AI, the, the fear that they will take over some jobs as well. But what really makes you know our business and what makes it is is the people. But certainly in Kasna, and, and I'm enormously proud to. Uh, to be part of Kasna who really takes a invests a lot in not only our own employees and the well-being in terms of and how uh, how to develop but also we have a large supply chain and how we work with that supply chain mm. of, of actually lifting up some of the uh, uh, some of the working stats which maybe in the past in the Middle East wasn't up to up to scratch of actually lifting lifting that so I think I'm extremely proud and it, it fits perfect with you know how I am as a you know as a person and, uh, and and managing people and dealing with people that uh, without having the engagement and the uh, really the engagement and commitment from people um, you know it, we wouldn't have the uh, have what we have in terms of the, the success of the business. So I think that's Thank you fine. very much, Johan. It was a pleasure to host you on Let's Talk Tech. And that was uh, Johan Nilerud from Khazna on Let's Talk Tech in Antibes. Thank you. Thank you very much.